Hello and welcome to case study number three. So let's pull up the book and let's read what we're going to be looking at today when it comes to the case problem. So again, we're going on with Carly's catering. Um, and we're going to kind of go off of that. So now we're going to modify the program so that the main method only contains three executable statements that each call a method as follows. So your first executable statement calls a public state static int method that prompts the user for the number of guests and returns the value to the main. The second executable statement calls a public static void method that displays the company motto with the border. And then the last executable statement passes the number of guests to public static void method that computes the price of the event, displays the price, and displays whether the event is a large event. Okay, so I believe there are three different parts for this. Let's we'll start with part A. I'm going to move the book out of the way. What I'm going to do is, um, is to say the file is Carly's event price with methods. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a file save as Carly's event price with methods. Okay, there we go. And I'm going to add that up here with methods. And I'm going to come up here and I'm actually going to call this number three, Carly's event price with methods. Perfect. So the first thing it tells us is that we only want to have three statements in the main. We're going to have something to get the number of guests. We're going to have something to display the motto, and then we're going to have something to display the details. So let's go ahead and break this main up into, I'm going to comment out everything in main because we're probably going to have to cut and paste here and it's just going to make a lot more sense uh, if I don't delete anything quite yet. So there we go. Now everything's green. Happy. So the first statement is that we're going to return the number of guests. Um, the first method is going to be a public static public static int method that prompts the user for the number of guests and returns that number to the main method. Okay, so let's say let's call it get guests. Okay, we have nothing that it's coming, and remember, no semicolon, but we have our start and close um, curly brackets. So let's create a variable in here, we're going to call it guests. Okay, and then what I want to do is I'm going to want to gather this user input. So I've got everything here, so I'm going to cut that out of there, I'm going to put it down here. Okay, so scanner equals new scanner, system.outprintline, enter the number of guests, number of guests equals input, next in. Finally, what we have to read, actually this is going to be guests because I changed the name, guests equals input number of guests. We need to return that number. Okay, now instead of that up here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say I need to make a variable, so int guests, and then guests equals get guests. Okay? That's moving that first one into a method. Let's get rid of some of these blank lines so that we can see what we're doing. The second executable is going to call a public static void method that displays the company motto with the border. So how about we say display motto. Okay, again open and close. Right here is the motto portion of it. Okay, there we go, move the motto. Okay, display motto. Okay, the last executable statement in the instructions say that it's going to be a public static void 
method that computes the price of the event, displays the price, and displays whether the event is a large event. So let's call it display details. Okay. Now we are going to need some information and what we're going to need is we're going to need this number of guests. So let's go up here, let's say display details, let's send it guests, which is an int, which means I need to put an int here. How's that? And that's actually going to get, I believe, all the rest of this. I'll go through it and double check. Okay, but it's got my three calls right here, which is exactly what I wanted. Let's get rid of my commenting. I don't need that anymore. I've got exactly what I need. So nothing has actually changed when you're looking at the logic of this program. All that has changed is where things are, okay? So the calculation is being done here. Um, you know, the guest price is still $35. There's still 50 in a large event. Uh, we don't need this number of guests because it's actually being passed. We do need the double though for the price. So price equals guests times the guest price. Guests and guests. Okay. Let's go ahead and run this one and make sure it does what we think it's gonna do. Number of guests, let's say 75. Okay, display the motto. It says 75 with $35 a person, and there's my amount, uh, whether this is a large event, and that is true. So that is part A. Let's keep going. I'm gonna bring the, the, um, the book back. Let's go on to the pit next page. Part B, create a class to hold event data for Carly's Catering. Your class is going to contain two public final static fields that are going to hold the price per guest and the cutoff value for a large event. Three private fields that hold an event number, number of guests for the event, and the price. The event number is stored as a string because Carly plans to assign event numbers with alphanumeric. Two public set methods that are going to set the event number and the number of guests. The price does not have a set method because the set guest method will calculate the price. And then three public get methods that are going to return the values in the three non-static fields. Okay. Let's see what we're doing here. So, we want a new class. We're going to call it event. We don't need a main in this. That's great. Actually, here, let's put it here. New class. We're going to call it event. We don't need a public, uh, we don't need a main, sorry. Finish, so it should come up just blank. Now, the first thing it tells us is that we want two public static final fields. So let's go up here and we're going to say public final static. Okay, and we're going to have two of them, it says. Okay, one is going to hold the price, so that's going to be a double. Okay, it's going to be um, final static, so it's going to be a constant. So we want it all caps. So guest price, and let's set it equal to $35. And the second one is going to be a cutoff value for the large event. Okay, so again, that's going to be an int. And again, constant all caps, so large underscore event equals 50. Okay, don't forget when you come into these, definitely go ahead and put your headers, event, there we go, and this is going to be an event.java. It's going to be an event class, oops, there we go. Next, we're going to have three private fields. So private, okay, that holds an event number, number of guests for the event, and the price. Okay, so the event number is going to be a string. 
it is going to be the number of guests. And then we're going to have the price, which is going to be a double. Okay. We're going to go ahead, we have, let's see, the next th step says that we're going to have two public set methods. Okay, so sets are usually don't return anything. So we're going to say public void set, and we're going to set event number, and then we're going to say public void set guests. Okay. Now it's going to set the event number. So event number is going to be a string. So it's going to have to send it a string. And we're going to say event number equals, equals number. And then number of guests, it's going to send it an int. And number guests equals guests. Okay. Once you have the number of guests, you can then calculate the price. Okay, and that's what it says in here. It says the set guest method will calculate the price. Okay, so your price is going to be equal to number guests times the guest price. Okay. And then last but not least, it asks for three public get methods to return the values in the three non-static fields. So we, oops, watch that caps lock. <laughs> public, um, let's see, the first one's going to be a string because it's going to be event number. So string get event number. Then we're going to have a public int get number guests. And then finally, we're going to have a public double get price. Okay, the first one is going to return uh, event number. The second one is going to return number guests. And the third one is going to return the price. Oops. Oh, typing is not my friend today. Return price. Okay. Save the file as event.java. So perfect. We are already saved as event.java. Okay. That's going to be part two. Okay. That's this part B. Okay. So I'm actually going to put B here. I'll put it here and put 3A. Okay. Last but not least. Part C says to use the Carly, Carly's event price with methods class as a starting point for a program that demonstrates the event class you created in 1B, but make the following changes. You already have a method that gets a number of guests from a user. Now add a method that gets an event number. The main should declare an event object, call the two data entry methods, and use their returned values to set the fields in the event object. Call the method from Carly's event price with methods class that displays the company motto with the border. The method is accessible because it is public, but you must fully qualify the name because it is in another class. Revise the method that displays the event details so that it accepts the newly created event object. The method should display the event number and it should still display the number of guests, the price, and all the other junk that we already looked at. Okay, perfect. So part C, it, it says, so Carly's event price with method, let's do a save as, and they want to call this one event demo. Okay, event demo. So we're going to call this. And this is going to be C, event demo. We're going to call this event demo. Beautiful. OK. 
Okay. So we have to now add the fact that we need an event of event number in here. Okay. We still need the guests. Okay, so get guests. And let's copy this and do a get event number. Okay. Okay, it's going to return a string. Get event number. Okay, we're going to make this a string. Uh, event number. That's what we're going to want to send back. Enter event number. There. And then here, this is going to have to be a next line. Perfect. Okay. So you can see it's sort of, it, it goes along the same numbers of get, the number of guests. Um, that one we're not changing at all. Okay. So you're going to get the guest and then event number equals get event number. Okay. Now, what it wants us to do is to create an event, okay, which is the class that we already just defined. So event with a capital E equals new event, okay? Now remember, we did not create an a constructor class, so Java's going to automatically um, create a blank one for us. So we're gonna, that's the one we're going to use, okay? Then we're going to get the information and then we're going to put that information into that event class. So event dot set guests guests. Okay. And then event dot set event number event number. Okay. Beautiful. Okay, now, what else did it tell us that it wants us to do? The company motto, they want us to use the one that is in the Carly's um, price with methods. It wants us to use this display motto. So, in the event demo, let's get rid of display motto because we don't want that one there. Okay, we're going to use the one that we made in the other class. Okay. Now, in order to do that, we have to fully qualify. Okay, so let's look. Carly's event price with methods. See how we called it public. That means it's, it's accessible through anything. We've got the static, which means we can use it. So let's go back to event. So let's call this Carly's event price with methods dot display motto. Okay, that's what's going to give us that call to show the motto. Okay, now to display the details, we want to do something different. We want to send it our event. So let's send it the event. Now let's come back here. Let's fix the display details. It's going to be an event with a capital E. I'm going to call it E here. Okay, event E. So we don't need any of this. We already calculated the price. The event calculates the price itself. So we do have to add the event number though. So let's copy one of these lines because I'm lazy. So let's see. The event number, uh, you know what, let's do, make it simpler than that. Event number e dot get event number. Okay, that's what's going to give us that event number that we've used in the set. Okay, the price for an event with e dot, right, get guests, get number guests. Okay, at e dot guest price. Now, let's go do a double check. An event type up here. Oh, look, we made these public, so that's okay. We can talk to them directly, and we can use them directly, okay? So, e.guestPrice, that's all we have to do, okay? 
per guest is B dot get price. Okay. Why do I have a warning? Create a getter. I don't want to create a getter. Okay. System to whether this is a large event is E dot get guests is greater than E dot large event. Okay. Let's hit that compile and run. Okay, number of guests. Okay. Uh oh. Unresolved compilation. The method get guests is undefined. Oh, because I I didn't call it get guests, did I? I? It's get number guests. I believe. Let's see. Get number guests. Yeah. That was my bad. Okay. Number of guests. Okay, so event number, whatever I just typed, uh, at 50 is that much per guest is that is the amount and it is a large event, so that's true. So that takes care of A, B, and C. Please make sure you turn in the three different files, the event demo, the event, and Carly's event price with methods.